We're closing in on spring practice, and one of the position groups that we're really concerned about is cornerbacks. Bunch of guys transferred. A couple of superstars are going to the NFL. We're going to talk about who left, who's coming in, and what that group's going to look like when Alabama takes the field for the first time under Coach DeBoer. Thanks for hanging out with us here on the Bama Tailgate YouTube channel. Make sure that you guys like and subscribe. Give us a thumbs up, and let's get this thing going. Roll Tide, everybody. Here is your invitation. So everybody, there he is, Big Elmo, Brett Elmore from WJLX in Walker County, the uh, antennaless station. That's right. At Brett Elmore Show. I'm uh, at Broadcaster Mick. And Brett, uh, any updates on the antenna? No, no. Just uh, got, got a few estimates today, and I'm just getting further in the hole. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be it's all right. Is there any developments on who might be responsible for this? Uh, possibly, yeah. Well, that'll so, be interesting. I can't so wait. To, we'll, we'll see. Can't wait to get to the bottom of this mystery. I think it's going to be very intriguing. Yeah. Um, all right. Let's it's talk about. Good. Yeah. Let's talk about Bama football. Another thing that disappeared besides your 200 foot radio antenna was almost the entire quarterbacks position group for the Crimson Tide. All those cornerbacks rolled out, uh, and here's here's the damage. Okay, first off, once Coach Saban left, uh, you know, he coached a lot of these guys with uh, Coach Tavarius Robinson, who went to Georgia, and you knew that Kool-Aid McKinstry was going to the NFL, and he did, right? Good move. Terry and Arnold, yeah, he's going to the NFL, too. Hate to see both of those guys go. Really got to like Arnold. Great personality through the NILs, you know, the you, 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 he would come on the next round and see him on there. Really funny guy, won me over. Transfer portal killed Alabama in this group. I'd say, of any of the groups on the team, this is the one that hurts the most. Trey Amos transfers uh, to Ole Miss, Des Ricks transferred, Jameer. Uh, Grimsley transferred to uh, Florida, right? Earl Little Jr. transferred. Antonio Kite transferred. And that's pretty much your whole group. I mean, I'm guessing that you were expecting some of those guys were going to slide right in the starting positions, even with a lot of the talent that's coming back. But uh, this hurts. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this hurts. Uh the portal just absolutely swallowed up basically every corner we had. But we've got, you know, one coming back, I believe, and then we have some some of our own. Uh, one transfer, and uh, then we recruited well. Uh, do you think this may be one of those positions we talked about it yesterday where you hit the, the spring portal and maybe try to find just a little more beef here? Yeah. Yeah, no doubt about it. I think that's exactly what you do here. Um, now, some of these guys could make an impact. The problem is you got some really talented, true freshmen. I mean, some five-star guys. But it really worries me to think about having an entire cornerback group of players with no experience. And that's, you know, kind of what we're looking at right now. So here's here's the the group that we have, right? Jaleel Hurley who is the only guy that stuck around. And he is a four-star that didn't play out of Florence. But he's a guy that played safety and played corner. And I guess in this situation, hey, guess what? You're going to be playing some corner. Yeah. Yeah, he didn't uh, He didn't hit the field last year. And that's the most experienced guy you have. <laughs> he practiced. Uh, you know, coming back and. Uh, that, that hurts. And you mentioned these young guys that we'll get into here in just a few minutes, but uh, look, I don't care how good you are on the high school level. You may be a five-star, but still 
the speed of the game. It's, you, you've got to get used to it. Uh, it's it's a different world, man. And, um, it, yeah, it scares me, especially with uh, Coach uh, uh, Womack. Uh, his, uh, you know, scheme, you know, they, they swarm defensively but at 4-2-5. Um, <laughs> he's going to have to find some safeties if he's going to – be right at a four two five. Yeah, and that's a different group. But they they took a hit too. I mean, look, Caleb Downs yeah. rolled out, and that that tells you all you need to know. But Damani Jackson is the most experienced guy. He transferred in from USC. Um, you know, he he was a guy that almost came to Alabama, and then remember he committed on the field. He's the guy that Coach Saban came during the Rose Bowl and ran over and shook his hand. Remember, it was going to be like him. It was. Michigan and Alabama, and then um, he ended up coming to Alabama. So that's it. I mean, those are your two experienced guys as of this camp, right? Mm -hmm. uh, let's talk about a couple of the other guys. Jalen and Bakwe, you know about him uh, from Clay Chalkful, super athlete. I think he's the most important player that came in from this last class, leadership wise. He can do it. In he can really do anything on the football field. But I'm looking for him to eventually emerge as a superstar, concentrating on just playing defense because he's yeah. been so integral to the offensive side of the ball in high school. It's going to be great to see him, and I think he's got a real chance to start. What about Zay Mincy? Zay Mincy, um, you mean Bam Bam? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bam Bam from down in Daytona Beach, uh, mainland high school. <laughs> Uh, another guy that that could really make a difference, but not I, I, not immediately. You know, I don't I don't think uh, he's going to have to get in the weight room. Uh, that's something that they're going to have to look at. Uh, he's six three, one hundred eighty pounds. Um, another multi sport athlete, uh, really fast, really good uh, nose for the football. And last year in high school, uh, he helped. Uh, uh, Daytona Beach mainland won their first state championship in uh, 20 years. And he was the big guy on campus. Uh, uh, eight regular season games, racked up 28 tackles and uh, 12 um, uh, pass breakups and an interception. He's a player, but once again, he's young. Yeah. True freshman. Yeah, and then Zabian Brown. At least you got five-star talent back in there as far as the young guys. Yeah, and and Brown's another one of those guys, six foot, hundred eighty pounds, um, and that's that pipeline from uh, modern day out in California. Mm -hmm. uh, we've talked about it in previous shows. That pipeline continues from California, uh, but he has that ideal uh, corner frame, um, and uh, you know, last year in high school. Finished up with 22 tackles, a tackle for loss, three interceptions, one for a touchdown, a couple of forced fumbles. So, obviously, another five-star that uh, has a good nose for the football. But, uh, you know, I would, wouldn't be surprised if I see him out on the field as a true freshman, though. Yeah, look, any of these guys have an opportunity, you know, and you talk about out there in California, Monty Jackson, you know, part of that same program. I mean, it this – is the thing that hurt the most about the way the transfer portal went down. And then you see these guys going to Auburn and Ole Miss and, you know, and, and, and Florida state. And you, you want to keep those guys in your program. And it just felt like that was the area where there was a big disconnect when Saban retired, because my gut feeling is, that uh, Tavares Robinson probably didn't know what to do, and then all of a sudden now he's going to to Georgia, and then and then these guys were kind of scattered out all over the place. I, I, I mean, you know, it's just crazy that that Hurley's the lone returner. You know, when you when you factor in the NFL as well. So I, I think going into camp, this is one of the areas where I really want to see what happens, and and the way that football is played now. You know, cornerbacks are so important. And, and you think about last year's football team with Arnold and um, and Kool-Aid. I mean, you're talking about lockdown, man. And, and yeah. teams were afraid to throw on those two guys. You know, they tried yeah. to find other places to throw the football. That's probably not going to be the case this year unless 
one of these young guys or maybe two of these young guys are just savants. Yeah, they, they talk about Brown being just a total, totally natural talent, but he's also shows a lot of maturity. So that's why, you know, he may be a candidate to really um, step up and, and, and earn a position. But uh, like, like I mentioned, it's up for grabs, man. All, all positions are up for grabs. Uh, but this is one that um, it's, it's definitely concerning. Definitely. Yeah, no doubt about it. Well, we'll see. And then, like I said, and you mentioned it too, the uh, spring transfer portal opens up right after a days over. And I could see Alabama being very aggressive in this area. And now you wonder like, you know, scholarship wise, you know, handful or less of scholarships right now available. But I wonder if that changes, you know, because the thing about the transfer portal is that it goes both ways. It like, does. really feel like that when coach Saban retired, um, you know, coach DeBoer and his guys can take advantage of that. Or maybe they look and they go, you know, we've got the talent right here that we need to develop and we're going to be all right. And if you get a good pass rush, which is another video we'll do talking about the defensive line and pressuring the quarterback. But if those guys work, it makes it a lot easier on the corners to take care of of their job. All right, guys, let me remind you that we're brought to you by Pearl River Resort over in Choctaw, Mississippi. Now's a great time to swing over and check out Golden Moon Casino. They're celebrating 30 years right now of existence. They've got the uh, sports book where it is uh, Vegas style and it's legal to wager on games. They've got table games and slots. They've got a spa, water park, and uh dancing rabbit golf course. It's the Augusta, you can play, plus some great concerts coming up, including the Wallflowers, including Cool and the Gang, uh, including Brian McKnight. You've got Big and Rich, and I think we talked about it yesterday, Boys to Men. So that's yeah. going to be a fun summer over there. Yeah, really. And uh, who was the other one that they just announced uh, also? Was it Lone Star? Yeah, and Lone Star. Yep. Yeah. Well, so uh, it'll be big there at Pearl River. Yeah, you're going to have to go check it out. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out with us. Also, let me remind you that uh, our buddy Catfish is always out there at ChadwickAnderson.com. He's helped over 10,000 families get into homes, including me, helped me get into my studio in my home. He, and As much as we joke around about him being catfish, it has nothing to do with catfishing anybody. It's what his dad was calling everyone when I watched the guy win $40,000 on the uh, slots in two pools in five minutes, which is still probably a record at right. eras in new Orleans. But um, if you're in the mortgage game right now and, uh, or you need somebody to help you with that, buying a house, selling investment consultant, Airbnb expert, uh, give Chad a call. And he says he answers his phone. The first ring uh, find out for yourself the numbers right there. Thanks for hanging out with us guys. And we will talk to you again tomorrow. Roll tide. 